Blue Hondos. Can't get it no time for the covers. No More Sleep Game Script is all about helping you with your week to week fantasy football lineup. At No More Sleep, we give you data and information so that you can make informed decisions rather than tell you who to draft or what players to sit and start. The best approach is for you to make objective moves. All right, so we're going to talk about the Panthers for week two against the Bucks. Um, this is really just three conclusions. This one is kind of straightforward. The first thing is Todd Bowles, he's not a joke. All right, I can guarantee you that this Buccaneers defense is going to look much better this year than it did last year. I'll give you examples, and then I'll tell you why not to panic if you have Panthers uh, players that you want to try to start against the Bucks. But understand your opponent. So first off, last year the Bucks were weak across the board, um, and it was specifically around receptions per game. They allowed an average of 24.2 perceptions. I mean receptions per game. They allowed an average of 274 receiving yards per game. That was bottom 10. And they allowed about 2.1 receiving touchdowns per game, which was bottom 10. You flip that over to the rushing side. They had allowed the most rushes, one of the most rushes of 20 plus yards. So that was bottom 10. And they were bottom 10 in allowing rushing touchdowns. Now, you look at Todd Bowles and the small sample size that he that he's shown us through the preseason and especially in week one against a very sketchy 49ers offense, by the way. However, Garoppolo was actually pretty efficient in the amount of attempts um, that he had. However, when you look in a hole, it looks like, you know, uh, Todd Bowles is going to be able to get this defense better. I mean. Just from that first game, they were top five and receiving average top five and receptions allowed and number two and receiving yards allowed. So they basically did not allow anything to happen. That score is not indicative of what really happened defensively for the Buccaneers. So respect them more than you did last year. Um so just one more one more thing. Again, this is very important. They allowed one receiving touchdown and zero rushing touchdowns in that game. Okay? It was the Bucks offense that basically lost that game and made it a blowout. All right, so now pivoting back over to the Panthers, what do you do? Well, if you got C-Mac, that's pretty simple because he has like 98% of the snap share. Uh, there is no one else. But things happen, and that's why no more sleep focus on game script. So... The main thing that you're looking for in week two against the Bucks, if you have a Panthers running back, say C-Mac goes down or something like that, then what you want to look for is breakaway run rate. That's that's the main thing. Uh, that's the only uh, statistic, you know, metric uh, that's going to pretty much almost guarantee some kind of success. The other stuff uh, with Todd Bowles now being the defensive coordinator for the Bucks, it's up in the air. Okay, so you can't guarantee that this or that is going to happen. But the breakaway run rate is something that Todd Bowles Jets was weak against and the Buccaneers has been consistently weak against in, in recent history. Lastly, on the, the ball catching side of the house, there are three main metrics that you want to pay attention to. Receiving average is close to nine yards as possible. So you want a receiving average of nine yards as close to that as possible given the type of defense that the Buccaneers run. Target share, you want that to be as close to 30% as possible, given the type of defense that Todd Bowles like to focus on. And then for target separation, you need that to be as close as possible to 1.8, but honestly, I would say 1.8 or more. I wouldn't even look at anything less because uh, that's going to be a problem and the, 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 the kind of defense that Todd Bowles run. So, receiving average of nine yards, target share of, of close as possible to 30. Normally, tight ends do that. Um, and then, target separation of 1.8 or more. There are two people that fit that bill perf perfectly. It's uh, DJ Moore and Greg Olson. All right? Are we saying that that's, you need to go and start those guys? No, we're saying if you're trying to choose between Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore... Okay, and Greg Olson, like you're trying, you got all of them and you're trying to choose. You don't have enough space to start everyone. Um, you go with, if you had to choose between those, you go with DJ Moore and then Greg Olson. Okay, 
Um, obviously, you got to look at draft capital. Where did you get the guy? And then look at the other people. You got to do the same exercise with the other people that you're considering who are not on the Panthers team and see if you feel better about their matchup. Okay? If you feel better about their matchup, they have more upside connected to it, then you go with them. But this was specifically to help in the realms of the Panthers. There are other guys I'm not even listing here. Someone can go down. All right? And you might have someone stash on the Panthers. Well, again, receiving average, target share, target separation. We gave you the numbers. As long as they can match up to that, go ahead and put them in. All right? No more sleep game script. This video sponsored by FanLife, the sports app, FanLife.com. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe. So you can stay up to date on the videos. We're going to break down weekly matchups. However, we're going to do it team by team. All right. I'm not going to put both teams on the same video. So subscribe so you can keep up to date. No more sleep. Go get it. I got it. Get it. Go get it. I got it. Get it. Go.